People over the years have said a lot of things about their specific job preferences, what makes a job a job, and so on. Ever since I joined the game in A Realm Reborn, I've been a Dragoon, so I've played every single iteration of Dragoon since the end of the base game. The 2.0 launch version of the job, which was mostly just skill effects being slightly different, is the only version I did not get to experience. People throw around the term job identity a lot, and it does have legitimate use. Some people have problems with articulating what they mean by it, though. When it comes to, say, Samurai, people say removing Kaiten ruined the job identity. But why? Because it had a flippy sword? I tend not to get straight answers. Personally, I'd say Kaiten stopped being interesting or important when they changed Tagakure to stop being stronger than Midare Setsugeka. Yes, that actually was the case in Stormblood. But I would say that was the Hagakure change, and Kaiten being removed did nothing to alter the job identity. People tend to make comparisons to Dragoon for me to understand when I just don't agree with the direction they come from. This is all to say how I view job identity from a gameplay standpoint. So ahead of the coming Dragoon changes in Dawn Trail, let me go into what I consider Dragoon's identity. An identity we have had since A Realm Reborn. If you like this video, please be sure to do all them YouTube things, follow my links below, and maybe even support me on Patreon. But let's get right into A Realm Reborn Dragoon. So a lot of Dragoon's basic toolkit has remained largely the same since the old days. Any Dragoon player nowadays will recognize nearly every skill. Sorry the quality is low, getting video or pictures from the A Realm Reborn days is very hard. There's a reason why I insist on keeping my guides up. Archival stuff is very hard to find. Anyway, this is Dragoon Hotbars. From the top row, we have the same skill as we always knew. Nowadays, Blood for Blood is Lance Charge, but functionally it is 90% the same. But then we have Invigorate, Keen Flurry, and wouldn't you know, Faint. Come a long way from Faint being a hand. Invigorate is a relic of the TP days when physical jobs had their own form of mana. Keen Flurry was kinda bad, upping our parry rate for a little bit. And Faint was... a slow. Didn't reduce damage, it slowed enemies. And remember, slow is cast speed, not movement. But otherwise, most of these old skills aren't identity. Instead, let me point out something missing from the screenshot. Internal Release, a different skill from Warrior's Inner Release, was a pugilist skill that you could cross-class. Lancet and Dragoon could use this skill, and it was a 20% crit increase for 15 seconds. Even back when we were on a 3 minute opener meta, this was a 60 second cooldown. You wanted this. The second row is where things start to get interesting. This green skill, you should know, this is Power Surge, given by Disembowel. Back in the day, Disembowel gave a different effect, a piercing debuff on the target. Power Surge back in these days was entirely different. It would buff your next jump or spine shatter dive by 50%. That's right. An OGCD buffing another OGCD. Jump doesn't buff Mirage Dive, but Dragoon always had something just like it. And you would always buff Jump, because Spine Shadow Dive was always weaker. But also this was when Jumps were slow to use, and it separated the whiners from the good Dragoons. That being, any decent player wouldn't care about the animation locks. I mean, aside from 2.0 being just a mess in general. Then to the right we have Ring of Thorns and a Leg Sweep. Ring of Thorns was a bad AoE skill that would be good only if you got a side positional combo, yes you heard that right, side positional combo, off of Heavy Thrust. And Leg Sweep was as it does now. It's a stun that also did damage. Yeah, you were using Leg Sweep off cooldown, so a lot of weaving there. The third row we have two skills in the bottom left you might not know. The yellow one is Impulse Drive. True Thrust goes into both of our combos, right? Impulse Drive used to be the only way to start the Chaos Thrust combo. The one on the left was Heavy Thrust. This had a side positional, which remember would combo into Ring of Thorns for AoE, and would give you an attack buff. Now essentially this attack buff is what today is Power Surge from Disembowel. Let's ignore the other blue cross-class skill at the end of the bar and focus on the Flamey skill. This is Phlebotomize, a skill I would be happy to see come back in a new form. Much like some people like Kaiten for its spinny sword animation, the idea of Phleb is fun to me. As a skill itself, it has no place in current Dragoon. 
But anyway, it was a combo-less skill that would apply a powerful dot. As far as Dragoon, this was the full toolkit. Notice how many OG CDs we had even in these days. Even ignoring stuff like Invigorate, we had three OG CD buffs just like today. Life Surge, our three jumps, Leg Sweep could be the olden days Mirage Dive. As far as our main GCD loop, it felt the same. Heavy Thrust, Chaos Thrust combo, Phlebotomize, Full Thrust combo, and Repeat. Our base rotation was linear as hell still, though we had pivot points for flexibility on Heavy Thrust and Phleb. So even back in ARR, Dragoon played near identically to what it is now, with the obvious exceptions of the added Blood and Life of the Dragon phases, linear GCDs, and a lot of weaving involved for our opener. Many things with short cooldowns too, meaning we had stuff to do every minute. The job, even for as bare bones as ARR was, was pretty busy. Then came Heaven's Word, and we got five new skills. Battle Litany at 52, Blood of the Dragon at 54, Fang and Claw, Reeling Thrust, and then finally Gears Gogol. There's a reason people yearn for Heaven's Word Dragoon. We had all that stuff in ARR, and now we have three more OG CDs and the fourth hit to our combo. Just like it is now, Fang and Wheeling are the fourth hit only. There is no fifth combo hit until Stormblood. While Battle Litany was used only in openers every three minutes, Blood of the Dragon and Gears Gogol were on minute cycles. Your goal was to do three Gears Gogols every minute, and then the third Gears Gogol would prematurely end Blood of the Dragon's buff for you to then weave in the button for reapplying it. People argue that this form of Dragoon was even busier than the current Dragoon. It wasn't as simple as it is now either. Gaskogel actually cost time from Blood of the Dragon. Feng and Wheeling would restore time while it constantly was ticking down. You could only fit in three Gaskogels, but you had to pay attention to when you used them. Things got even worse if you started to do 3.5 Gaskogels per minute in the skill speed build. Weaving all this stuff in constantly, especially at openers, it could be really tough. Dragoon went from busy to really busy. Stormblood is where Dragoon basically turned into what it is in Endwalker. Five hit combos, internal release and cross class were removed but we got Dragon Sight instead, and we lost fan favorites Phlebotomize and Power Surge. Oh, and Ring of Thorns is dead. Rest in hell. Life of the Dragon entirely changed up how Blood of the Dragon and Gears Gogol worked. Blood of the Dragon basically became a freebie to maintain unless you had 30 seconds of downtime. Essentially, it no longer mattered in most cases. Gears Gogol you stopped thinking about when you fired, as when doing your rotation in the right order, you would naturally enter Life of the Dragon at the right times. The job is still pretty damn busy, especially when you get to reopeners. Gears Gogol usage back in Heavensward often gets raised to overly high a standard. You merely only hit the button when your timer was above 20 seconds or something like that. You know what you started doing in Stormblood? Enter Life of the Dragon when you had over 20 seconds of time in the buff. The exact same thing. But now, those three Gears Gogol usages over a minute were split into constant Gears Gogol usages and three Nestrons every Life of the Dragon. In terms of actions per minute, it comes out about the same. In terms of how busy the job is, it's about the same, if not actually in Stormblood's favor, thanks to Mirage Dive. The focus of Dragoon has shifted twice now. No Blood of the Dragon, to Blood of the Dragon focus, to Life of the Dragon focus. A through line exists though. The identity of the job has always been here, only being further emphasized as the years go by. Dragoon's job identity is Weave Economy on top of a train track GCD rotation. We have so many buttons constantly taking up weaving slots. Jumps have been things we only recently starting having any chance of double weaving. They took up entire weaving slots, all while we had to fit in all the buffs too. Add in Life of the Dragon at the three minute mark? Jesus, there is no time for all of this. Good. I like that. That's what I like about Dragoon. I can boil Dragoon down into weave economy. And it makes sense even next to things like Ninja. Ninja has insane burst windows, but then becomes chill. Dragoon has busy bursts, but not just the bursts. We are consistent. We are a train. Going forward, Shadowbringer's only main contribution was removing Heavy Thrust. I miss you, old friend. 
people were for a long time asking for heavy threats to be removed and no other changes to be made to Dragoon. These people ignore the weave economy of Dragoon. Potion windows actually ended up sliding into pre-pull rather than first GCD. Simply removing a skill with no other changes on top of it, like what Shadowbringers basically was, will have effects beyond just removing a skill. Oh, we did get Stardiver 2. This still does take two weave windows and like, still clips your GCD. So putting Stardiver into reopeners? Hell yeah, does our weave economy take a new dimension? Then finally, Endwalker. Two eyes to enter Life of the Dragon, two stacks of Spine Chatter Dive, two stacks of Life Surge, Wormwind Thrust, and the two minute meta. Dragoon is busier than ever with full bursts every minute, and full reopener bursts every two. Things are insane. For all the complaining people have with the new timers, Dragoon exclusively benefited in the core gameplay. Say what you will about crit RNG and all that, the core gameplay is so good. You're always preparing to hit your next gear Skogul, Jump, Mirage, or even Life Surge in those windows where you're going to overcap and can't put it into a Lance Charge window. We are busy. We are very busy. But I wouldn't say it's on a level that's any different to what we've been since Heavensward. Sure, we definitely are busier, I won't pretend we aren't, but to a level needing to undo it? No, not at all. Yoshida saying Dragoon is too busy is concerning because busy is a key tenet to what I would say Dragoon's identity has always been. The two minute meta merely brought it to the forefront with it being far more consistently busy. Three minute meta, you did at least have some periods of calm. But one of the game's main criticisms is how slow it is to build up job toolkits across 90 and soon 100 levels. The job being busy at 90 is kind of like a natural progression of busy up to cap. It being as busy as it is at 90 is fine even for new players because they have to go through so much game to even get here. And if they level skip, well the level skip actually tells you to go look up a guide before doing any real content. Meanwhile, I do agree Dragoon needs a rework. The idea the job is too busy is wrong, but the idea it needs a rework isn't. Look at how huge the differences between the first three parts of the game are. Stormblood into Shadowbringers into Endwalker is just refining the life of the dragon iteration of the job. Don't ruin perfection, right? And that's the thing. Perfection. I find the current Dragoon near perfection, which leaves very little room for improvement and iteration. If we want Dawn Trail Dragoon to feel like something new and exciting, and not the same job we just spent however many expansions with, we need something completely new. So a rework. What kind of rework? I don't know. But one that keeps the identity of Weave Economy. It can be a less busy, but keep that focus. I want to have to worry about fitting stuff into buffs. I don't want to just have a lot of buttons. I want it to feel busy. When people suggest removing even just one button from Dragoon as it is now, and no further changes, they mess with this feeling. That feeling, I want to have it still. I want the identity to remain, while being new and refreshing. I don't know if there's dedicated devs on the Dragoon design team, but they've never let me down. I have enjoyed every Dragoon immensely. I just hope Dragoon is still my main in Dawn Trail. Thank you for watching, and I hope people understand why I'm a Dragoon, and what I'm hoping for in Dawn Trail, and what I'm potentially wary of in Dawn Trail. I love Dragoon, I want to keep loving it, and I want to play through Dawn Trail as a happy little clam. I'm going to have plenty of options to play regardless, but I keep coming back to Dragoon for a reason. The time we have left until the expansion draws ever shorter. We'll see soon enough. In the meantime, please rate, comment, subscribe, follow my Twitch, Twitter, or even Patreon. Thank you to all my patrons joining. I'm going to be trying to finish a bunch of projects I wanted done ahead of time, so expect a few different videos, provided I don't get bogged down with other things. Take care and may the power of Anne and Nidhogg's the waste to your enemies.